right, we are back in session. It is 11.30, time for the third quarter budget review. Um, before we start that, just one thing about the agreement to sell personal property regarding the docks. Uh, it says, seller agrees to deliver the property to the buyer on such and such date at the Goose Bay Marina. Um, I think that what this is is just a misunderstanding as to what it says. Seller agrees to deliver the property at Goose Bay Marina. It does not say seller agrees to deliver the property, but just to relinquish it. So um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign this particular contract unless there's any arguments from the board. No, nope, I think it's good to go. All right. Okay. Um, Mr. Hayes. Ann pointed that out. Thank you very much, Ann. All right, next we have the budget. Um, any preliminary things you guys noticed and want to discuss first? Franklin, do you have your budget? Uh, no, I'm, I, no, I'm sure. No, I don't. Do you want to postpone or? Through of anything that stood out. Um, okay, just just for public comment, um, this is probably the most important thing that we do is the budget. Um, not only setting it up, but watching to make sure that we're on target so there are no surprises. Um, you know, to not be watching this and to have a surprise hit in June is a bad thing. Um, so, one of the reasons that we do this is to make sure that we're keeping an eye on things so we can help offer advice, offer resources to a department head that may be having a tough time with their budget. Um, so, one of the things that jumped out at me is almost every single budget seems to be in the negative when it comes to postage and publishing mm -hmm. costs. Um, we don't do line item budgeting, we do bottom line budgeting. So what we will do um, as we get to the end of the fiscal year is a um, journal entry, which we just approved. Um, and there will be a lot in June just to make sure that we take money or department heads take money from a different line item and infill those publishing and postage. <coughs> line items. And then next year, department heads will have to look at what was spent this year and compensate um, with their new budgets by increasing that and decreasing something else. So that's one of the things that I thought was kind of interesting. You know, it might be too on um, postage. Postage is gone up. It has. It has. And it's possible that um, publishing will go up again. Uh, if you guys saw the ARM uh, administrative rule, they are looking at increasing uh, the cost of a folio by $2 from 9 to $11, which is 11 or 100 words for... From 11 to 12. 11 to 12, thank you. And then 9 to 10 for the second and on folios. So the first folio is 11 now, the first 100 words. And then for every word over 100, it goes into a second folio of 100 words. And that's at 9, and so that will go to 10, and 11 will go to 12. So is that for all printing? All for county and state printing. Hmm. So that's something that department heads will have to be aware of in determining their budgets for mm -hmm. next year. Um, the general computer off, uh, budget um, is only at 15% remaining. It's about $4,900 remaining in that account. So that's something to keep an eye on. <coughs> the uh, clerk and recorder's budget is made up of elections and record preservation, a bunch of different accounts, but just the general clerk and recorder um, is right on the line. It's at 24 percent. But I'm going to correct on something. Um, okay. 
find it. There's, there's a separate budget for elections. Yes. Okay. Yeah, right here, page 15. 15. And they've got 63% left. However, we have a major election coming up. Does that worry you how much is in there? Even though it's at 63% is the elections expert? I don't know about being the expert, but yeah, it does. What is the cost, roughly, for a primary? Because that'll be in beginning of June. That's this fiscal year, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Um, I would say probably thirty five hundred. Okay. Oh. That's back when I was doing <laughs> hands going like this. So. Well, I know if Joy said something about the school election being approximately four thousand. So <coughs> I know it's going to be at least that much. Oh, it's more than that. Because think how many judges you have. Because in the different polling places, you'd have five polling places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So much more absentee ballots, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. that's right. More absentee ballots. And higher postage mm -hmm. costs. Um, and for the primary, you've got two sets of ballots, so you've got. Exactly. The city election is in there, too, isn't it? Yeah, but the city is supposed to be. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so does the school. So does the school. Oh, yes. okay. But of course, we still have to have the money up front. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're probably okay, but we'll just have to keep an eye on that. Yeah. And the worst of it is, most of those bills won't come in until the June time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one thing with the maintenance budget, um, Mike has been um, working on a lot of big projects and a lot of them are in the detention center, building that new wall that's needed, um, correcting some paint. They've painted uh, some of the metal surfaces with inexpensive house paint without priming it, so it's all peeling back now. So he went in and repainted that. Um, a lot of that work is coming out of the maintenance budget. The other thing that's coming out of the maintenance budget is the propane, which has skyrocketed. And uh, come to find out, it's the number of inmates we have in the detention center taking hot showers, especially when it was so cold. They were taking multiple showers a day. There's no timers on those showers. So propane went sky high. And that has come out of the maintenance budget. He's still sitting at 27%, but I think we are going to have to sit down with Mike and figure out how to more equitably and accurately determine the maintenance budget so that he isn't paying for all those showers, for one. Can, is there some way we can put a timer on it? Um, we should talk to Nick about that. Nick and Mike have talked about it, and I'm not sure what they've come up with, but they have talked about that. You know, I'm all for letting them have shower time, but I'm not standing there forever. Right, exactly, and multiple showers per day, not sure unless there's extenuating circumstances if that's mm -hmm. necessary. Um, so I think there's a variety of things that we can do. Their maintenance and repair budget's over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's watching quite a bit of this, and, and it's his, his watching that's, that's kind of brought this forward. The other one I wanted to ask you about, page 31 is the... Um, and I can wait if you're not there yet. Okay, I am. That's the coroner's budget. Mm -hmm. And we had a request for uh, about $4,300 to come from PILT. Uh, from, um, uh, this would be from Brenda, from, uh, let's see, Ron's Diesel Repair and Towing. 
and this was for um, a tow bill for a wrecker to tow a burned vehicle um, on the corner call up a holiday gulch which required two semi wreckers and 47 days of storage on vehicle for storage and investigation we don't have the claim signed yet which needs to, to be signed before we can actually act on this but um, when you look at the coroner's budget it, it is sitting pretty good 38 percent but there really isn't a line item that could cover this 4300 um, so unless you look at contracted services which is at 1800 it's just um, a little bit low to cover that full amount so um, what did you say that bill is? Three thousand? Four thousand three hundred and five dollars. <coughs> and then that would be lots of money moved around. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Is that is that a vehicle still in storage or is it out now? Yeah. I don't know. All we have is the claim on it. And that was from November. So it's probably something where we should decide to go ahead and, and um, pay for it out of some fund, and then let Linda know so that she can sign the, the claim. And of course, we can't do anything until she does sign it. But I think she's waiting for an answer. Well, it must not be in storage anymore, because she has here 47 days of storage on vehicle for storage for investigation. So. Madam Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, well, Question, isn't it possible to store things like that in the sheriff's secure parking storage place? Does it have to be stored somewhere at a cost? Honestly, I don't. Oh, I'm sorry. Where is that bill? Oh, it was Ron's towing and diesel, wasn't it? I don't know, but that's a good question. And something that maybe we should find out. The impound drive. Right. Why not use that? Well, it can to a certain extent. Oh, uh, um, well, they can't? I said they can to oh, a certain can. extent. But there was a lot of investigation on this, and I, I'm assuming, and so I don't know what all, uh, usually they want to have in a secure place. Sometimes they have put them out there and, uh, and tarp them and stuff, but uh, in this case, I'm sure there was, uh, the state come out, I'm sure there's a pretty thorough investigating on it. Are they still investigating it, or? I don't think so. I don't know. I, I don't think so. Well, and it could, it could be kind of an ongoing thing. Have all this information there, and it ties into something else, mm -hmm. which is what it probably will. I, I assume. Uh, Franklin, could you give us a little bit of explanation of what we're talking about? I'm, I guess I'm in the dark. Well, that particular case was uh, up on Holloway. I think it was a hunter that found this vehicle was burnt, and there was a, a body in it, and so uh, there was probably an investigation on it. That's about all I can say. So it was in November. Yeah, it was in November. <coughs> right at the end of hunting season, because there was a hunter that found it. Who's a young man from Butte, wasn't he? Well, he was from uh, Sheridan, actually. No, okay. In Idaho. I, I knew him at one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think he was, I don't know, was he in Bozeman at the time. No, I think he was back in Madison County when this happened. I, I think. I, I can say for sure. But that, that's, that's what the situation was. So do you want to get some details on that, Franklin? And then um, if you guys want, we can bring this up for a decision next week. Well, I guess I could talk to Brenda on it, yeah. Okay. I think that's what we need. Okay. And then ask her to stop and sign it. Yeah, and okay. then we'll address it. But as far as the, the bill, I mean, it's, uh, you know, we've already bid. We'll have to pay this bill. Oh, I'm sure. Not, you know, I'm just kind of see what all it was here. Of course, anytime they're up in the mountains like this, I not like I had. I wasn't up there. I, I know nothing about it other than what did I? that are low seem to be the ones that are um, specialized. Florida Health is only at 14%. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's a pretty small budget. Indigent burial is still 
Say that carefully because you can rest assured you'll do one. Right. You had to change those records up to the last six miles, it says. Someone's mm -hmm. been way up there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Then they had a winching up out of there. That's what it said here, so hopefully it keeps that one yeah, yeah and I'll just tell Brenda about it, I guess. Yeah. I'll put it back in her box because we can't do anything. In her box, okay, I'd be good. Yeah. Do you notice the road budget? Mm -hmm. um, the overtime looks okay. Um, Dan will have to address that, I'm sure, with uh, if we have any more flooding and with the emergency. But he's still sitting at 46% overall, and he has no negative categories whatsoever. Which I think is impressive. Why isn't there anything against road uh, employee benefits? I'm wondering if that isn't the payout. There's a little bit put into some of the larger departments in case somebody uh, resigns. And then that's their vacation and sick leave payout as employees. Um, we can double check with Debbie, but that's my guess. I think you're probably right when I think about it. The smallest line on him remaining is 26%, which us being at three quarters of the way through the year, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Bridge is still at 100%. Right, yeah. Um, Weed is another one that's doing really well. Mm -hmm. He's at over 50% of his overall budget. 52. Wouldn't have expected to the, to the winter, so that's why he's and the fiscal year starts July 1st, so he would have had spraying and spray days in the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, right, in the fall, yeah. Tim, yes. Uh, and on the on the weed budget, um, could you tell me what is the total um, annual fiscal budget for that department? I understand that the following the spring or when that budget gets expanded, that that's when they spray, but uh, I'm just curious, what is the total budget that they're working with? That I don't have. Okay. All we have right now are the expenditure reports. Which gives um, you the percentage of left. Right. So yeah, you've got 50%. Has, excuse me? You have, excuse me, you have 50% left in that week budget? Mm-hmm. So what is that amount? In the expenditures, in the expected expenditures, when you do your budget as a department head, what you do is you have several different line items, and it looks like there's about 15, 20 different line items. Salaries, unemployment, uh, workman's comp, FICA, PERS, office supplies, operational supplies, repair, postage, printing, utilities, etc. What you do as a department head is you look at last year's budget and then determine as a guesstimate, which is what a budget is, what you expect to spend in the following year. That's what we're looking at. It is not a picture of the full budget. This is just the expenditures a department head expects to spend. So it's not even looking at 50%. You can multiply his original um, expenditures, yes, yes. is 159000 But that isn't his full budget. It's just his expected expenditures. That's the same. It took a long way to get around there. I didn't ask the question right, but that's what I was looking for. Okay. There's grants, especially with the lead department. There's a lot of grants. Yes, I understand that. <clears throat> There's a lot of partnerships with Forest Service, FWP, um, di different partners. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, there'd be different budget sheets for those expenditure sheets. So it gives you a snapshot, but it's not the whole Thank you. Sure. Did you notice airport? Yeah. They um, spent, and I think that's what this 12000 is, they had an opportunity to buy fuel at a very reduced rate, so they took a chunk and did that. Um, they did add, actually uh, were able to put some money in their CIP this year, just from smart budgeting, and that's not reflected here. 
but I would have been alarmed if it wasn't for knowing about that fuel mm -hmm. purchase. And district court jury is at 100%. So that says to me we haven't had any jury fees, more jury trials. was something that Nancy had said to keep an eye on. Um, planning has been notoriously funded by subdivision fees in a lot of different counties. And with the slowdown in subdivisions, planning has been underfunded. Um, our planning department's doing fine at this point. It's 59% mm -hmm. remaining. So that's good to see. Ms. Gibbett, she hasn't done anything evidently. No, most of her work is in the spring with the larva. And last year was such an easy year, so she may be able to save up. She's got enough save for another truck, so we have two trucks on a bad year. She just needs a place to put it. Um, the senior meals, there will be a little bit of an infusion into that. Conjugate meals are way up. Um, and we are in aging county, so that's to be expected. But um, there was an influx of money that came to DPHHS that will funnel through the area on agency on aging areas, and uh, we'll be seeing some of that too. So that will help. Transport is it still at 98% remaining? Uh, when you talk to Mike, they're, they're here in over at the extension offices and working again. Yeah, he's aware of that. That budget's looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. 34. The detention center, I don't think that Nick budgeted for averaging 40 plus inmates, and yet his budget is right on target. This doesn't show the income, just the expenditures, but um, I think he's doing a phenomenal job. I believe he just told us the other day that he had 39 yeah. visitors, so to speak. The uh, health insurance, if you happen to see that one, the permissive is only at 17, 18 percent. Mm -hmm. um, that alarmed me at first, but what you have to do with those two is add the health insurance and the permissive, and it's actually at uh, 40, 43 mm -hmm. percent. Um, they take out the permissive first and then fill in the other. in fact been fully recognized on the insurance budget yet? Yeah, it has. For the county, we actually had no changes. Um, there's been very, very small changes that have affected us. One is a full-time employee is no longer considered at 32, but at 30 hours. Um, and if an employer tries to circumvent offering health insurance to their employees, and, and of course it's only employers with 100 or more, by having all their employees work 28, 29 hours, then uh, 
Obamacare actually has some kind of a target where you have to uh, take a number of your, whatever your percentage of part-timers is, and offer them health insurance so that it keeps a county, for example, from just keeping employees at 29 hours to not pay any health insurance. Um, we have very few part-timers. Seasonals um, are not, not eligible, and neither are temporary employees. So um, it didn't affect Broadwater County at all. It didn't increase our rates um, because of Obamacare. Um, and it didn't increase any people getting onto the insurance or um, offer any changes, really. Just very, very minor for us. Detention Center Services, line item 360. It's way over. Is that food? I don't know. 143, is that your page? Yep. Well, which one? Line item 360. 360. Three quarters of the way down the page. I didn't bring my bars book. Yeah, that is way over. Do you know what 360 is? Okay. Yeah, I don't know, you know what that, that one is. is? <clears throat> I mean, his bottom line is fine. Yeah. I think that's another one we'll, where we'll have to do a budget amendment to take from another line item. If you look at um, 398, it's 100% and there's 40,000 sitting there. We could funnel that. Mm -hmm. 2000 about 40000 to cover that 1800 in 360 through an uh, adjusting journal entry. But that is with meals um, and prison uh, utilities, prisoner. I think that's, um, I'm going to guess that's something like maybe commissary, telephone services, something along that line just based on where it's at in the list. Mm -hmm. Right, because of the increased inmates. Mm -hmm. That's right, the biggest thing. Yeah, it would make sense. I mean, it's going to balance out. Yeah. When he's taken in. Mm -hmm. I just wondered if it just seems so the one number to be over a thousand percent over. Right. Yeah, he only budgeted 130. I'm going to guess that's pharmacy or inmate services of some kind. Yes, sir. Um, just to give the commission an update on uh, County DES, I have contacted Mia Winfield, uh, consultant or private independent contractor to do some grant writing for DES. Hand. She's going to handle the Homeland Security grant applications for the two air radio and for the generator for the Emergency Operations Center and the fairgrounds of the EOC will be the 4-H uh, Good. And, uh, She'll do a good job. So I've heard mm -hmm. good things in how she does grants. I'm sure we're more work for her way. That's, that's in my budget, and I expect to be well. Probably revert a little money back. Yeah, your budget's looking really good. You have about almost $4,000 in contracted services alone. And no negatives. 
at all. Don't believe in names. Yeah, nice. So Mike, did they get the canal all fixed? I believe they do. I went by there Monday and there was no equipment around. The canal has been all uh, groomed, ready to probably plant grass seed. And uh, the excavators were down further south upstream. And I think they were over there on Answer and doing some work. Probably put water in the canal about the bottom 15. Small amount to get it soaked out. Been burning. Okay. <coughs> Not all of them. No. There's a whole bunch right behind me. Well, they can't burn in town. Toss them in there. will actually put a little water in and hope they float it down with the excavator yeah. or back hole to pull them out. They don't want to burn the town now. Again. <laughs> that would be a good thing not to do. <laughs> We're not coke time, cutting. Oh, yeah. Good year. About in the 30s, 20s, and 1800s. Check right below hers, full of weeds. You still got the plank in there. They're gonna have to are gonna take them out or not, but usually they do to get the water. The first yeah, time go through tossed in there, yeah. yeah. A lot of tumble. A lot of tumble weeds this year, man. Canal. Yeah. All canal. Bottom wind. Mm -hmm. Dry last year. Some weeds do good ones dry, rushing the salt. Windy. <coughs>
do? Don't we write a third size check to the library? Um, we've actually been able to pay it monthly this year. Um, the CIP is, is just in case they need something like a new security system like a couple of years ago. But no, we've been actually paying just, just I think it's monthly or quarterly. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Which it looks good. Most of them are pretty darn good. Yeah, no surprises. Mm -hmm. Doug is working with Tammy on the cash reconciliation as soon as that's done. We'll go ahead and do the revenue tool. Mm -hmm. So, any other comments on the budget? Budget review? Not for me. All right. Uh, so does it mm -hmm. doesn't look like we have any uh, COSs. So the only other thing that I wanted to address before we address the um, budget is, well, first off, is there anything else for the good of the order? Um, what I would like to do is just uh, take another step from the meeting we had last Wednesday and uh, discuss a couple of issues. Uh, those issues are uh, covered by the Constitution. And so um, because the rights of the individuals far outweigh the rights of the public to know, I would like to have just a 10-minute closed-door uh, discussion on personnel. Mm -hmm. All right, so well, no. to carry on with the conversation we had last Wednesday. We're going to have personnel. just a very short closed door personnel discussion. So with that, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much for coming, everyone. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. I'll get you out of time.